Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater, and today we're checking out how to incorporate a digital mixer into your live sound system. Now, the system I'll be demonstrating for you today is very similar to the system we run with the band I'm playing in. We have a digital mixer, and we're running to two powered speakers. In this case, I have a Behringer XAir X18 digital mixer, which is controlled from an iPad. And any of the concepts we'll be discussing here regarding the digital mixer will apply to virtually any of the digital mixers that are on the market. They're all very similar in that capacity. They offer different features, but the way they operate is very similar. And we're routing the stereo output from the digital mixer into a pair of QSC K12 powered speakers. So as I mentioned, the configuration that I'm showing you here today is very similar to what I run with the band I play in. We've got four vocal mics coming in on channels one through four. We've got two guitars, they're coming in on channels five and six. I've got stereo keyboards coming in on seven and eight. On channel nine, I've got a kick drum. And on channel 10, I've got a direct box feeding from the bass guitar. We've got two outputs feeding our powered speakers. And I also have two RCA auxiliary inputs here, which are coming from my iPhone. We use that for playing break music. Depending on the digital mixer you're using, having iPad control or iPhone control over it is really an easy way to set things up and make it work. Basically, you configure a network based on the mixer. In the case of the Xair X18, we actually have a Wi-Fi router built in, so it's very simple. With other digital mixers, you may need an optional Wi-Fi router to set up a network. But again, it's very simple to configure. In this case, on my iPad, I simply hit Settings, choose Wi-Fi, and then select my mixer. And you can see that it's already selected here. X18-2588A7 happens to be the network that's generated by this Xair X18. Once the iPad is connected, we can drop out of the network settings and open up our control software. In this case, we have the Xair app loaded on the iPad. We'll open that up. Now, setting things up here is very simple. Select Setup, and you basically go to the Network Settings, and then choose the device that you're going to create your network with. And in this case, it shows up automatically, and we simply need to connect to that. Once we've done that, everything is up and running. The iPad is talking directly to the digital mixer, and we have control from right here on the tablet. Once we have our network settings established, we can go back to the main screen, and now we can see our faders. We have our effects sends and returns here. We have DCA groups for remote control, mute groups, busing, the main outs, and so on. But getting things running is very simple. What I've done is create a basic scene that we load up at the beginning of each show. We can load that up, all our microphones are configured, and as long as everything is plugged in correctly, we're very close to ready to go. We just need to push the faders up, maybe adjust the EQ a little bit, set some levels, but we're pretty well set up and ready to get into action. So here's where we approach that. The first thing I've done is gone in and labeled my inputs so I know what's going where. In this case, it's under the setup menu, and layout. The scribble strips on the upper right are where we input the name for the channel, and we can also set a color. So I've colored my vocals yellow, guitars blue, and so on. But that basic housekeeping work out of the way, we're ready to go. The first input is a vocal mic coming in on channel one. Select my input setup. In this case, it's a condenser mic, so I turn 48 volt phantom power on. I can adjust my mic gain. I can set up a high pass filter if I want to remove some of the low frequencies and prevent rumble. And then I can move to the next channel, the second vocal, the third channel, the fourth channel, and so on. Now my guitars are mic'd with dynamic microphones, so I don't need 48 volt phantom power on those, but I could put on a high pass filter if I want to, just to take some of that rumble out. So we'll go ahead and run those up about 40 hertz. The next thing I want to do is establish my keyboard channels. Now I have stereo inputs coming from my keyboards on inputs seven and eight. And so I'm gonna take those channels and link those together using the link switch here. So I can link channels seven and eight together, and now when I move one fader, the other will move, and all the controls for the two channels are linked together. And this allows me to make one set of settings and apply it to both sides of that stereo input. We can continue on with our inputs here. My kick drum is also on a dynamic microphone, so I don't need 48 volt phantom power. I'm not gonna high pass filter that because I wanna have all those low frequencies. And next up, I have a DI from the bass. And again, no phantom power is required there and no high pass filtering. Scrolling over, I'm not using channels 11 through 16. 17 and 18 is my aux input coming from my phone. Again, that's for music playback during the breaks, so I can turn that up and down, and you can see I have signal coming in there already. Next up, in this case, on the Xair X18, I have four effects processors that I can access independently, and I've got the first two of those set up, one set up for reverb and one set up for delay, and I'm primarily using those on the vocal channels. Finally, as far as the input setup on the Xair X18, I have four DCA channels. These are basically remote controls that allow me to change the level on multiple channels simultaneously. What I've done is set up a DCA group on my vocals so I can bring all four vocals up and down simultaneously with one control. You could do the same thing with busing or subgrouping if you want to, depending on your digital mixer. Finally, we have our main stereo output and then some of our busing controls over here. But as far as our simple straight ahead setup, we're pretty well ready to go. So let's go back over here. We can begin to bring up our different channels. I've got my vocals 
coming up here, my guitars, keyboards, and again, those two channels are linked, my kick drum, and my bass. And we can start getting a mix together. We'll go back here and select our first input channel and begin working there. So we already looked at our input screen. We can look at our sends. And I've got my first two sends turned up, feeding into the reverb and the delay. I'm not using a gate in this case, but I could apply that if I want to. I'm also not using compression, but it's available if I want it. I've got a little bit of EQ, and this is just a starting point. This is already configured in my scene. We'll talk about scenes in just a little bit. So when I start the show, I've already got a little bit of EQ that I know is going to be effective, already applied to that channel. And I've done the same thing to the other four vocal channels. Now once we start getting signals, we're doing our sound check, we're setting up for the gig, I can adjust that EQ and fine tune it for the particular venue that we're in. I'm not using any insert effects, but those are available to me as well. Most digital mixers have those available, so you could add extra processing if you want. We have presets where we can load up things for each channel, so we might have a vocal preset that we can recall or a guitar preset, and that's a very fast way to put all those parameters into action with one button click. Finally, we have our output routing screen, and this is where we set up the pan for the channel if we're running in stereo. We assign to our DCA groups, to mute groups, and so on. Now once I have my basic setup, what I've done is configured a show. It's a band default show, I call it, where I've saved all these settings, and I've saved a single scene that I can reload, and that single scene restores all my settings to the basic settings I have when I turn the mixer on. This allows me to pretty well be ready to go for the show, aside from pushing the faders up. All my basic EQs are set, my sends are set, my effects are set. Just push up the faders and I should be able to start getting a mix and fine-tuning my other settings. It's a very fast way to work and one of the huge advantages to using a digital mixer. I hope this gives you an idea of how fast and easy it is to use a digital mixer with your live sound system. Being able to store settings, recall scenes makes it so simple and so fast to jump to a default setting and then you can quickly customize and get your gig rolling. It doesn't matter what digital mixer you're using, whether you're using a Behringer like this, one from PreSonus, one from QSC, whatever it might be, they have similar features as far as saving and recalling all those different settings and the way that you apply them to your different channels. So all those features are going to be available, and then the features are going to vary depending on the mixer that you're using. But this simple basic operation, the things that are going to get you going and playing your gig, are going to be similar in virtually every digital mixer that you work on. Thanks for joining me today on this look at digital mixers and your live sound system. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater.